The log cabin quilt block is a timeless favorite. It's easy to piece and very scrap friendly. Here's how to make a log cabin block. Let's take a minute to go over a few tips for beginners. You can certainly use a ruler, fabric marking pen, and scissors to cut your pieces. But quilters know that a clear quilter's ruler and a rotary cutter used with a cutting mat will give you accurate results more quickly. To use a quilter's ruler, match up the measurement line with the edge of the fabric. For this quilt block, I need strips that are 2 inches wide. So count over 2 inches, then line that mark up with the edge of your fabric. Stabilize the ruler with one hand and place the rotary cutter blade right next to the ruler's edge. Don't forget to place a cutting mat beneath your fabric. Press firmly and push the rotary cutter away from yourself to cut the fabric. Here's another tip. I like to label clear plastic bags with the measurement of the pieces it contains. Make one bag for each size, then hang them on the wall with push pins in the order they will be used. One last suggestion. If possible, set up an ironing board at chair height right next to your sewing table. You'll be pressing after every seam, so you'll save a lot of time if you can just swivel in your chair to use the iron. The log cabin block is made up of a center square surrounded by 12 strips that spiral outward. Here are the pieces you'll need to cut for one block. One three and a half by three and a half inch center square. One two by three and a half inch strip. Two two by five inch strips. Two two by six and a half inch strips. Two two by eight inch strips. Two two by nine and a half inch strips. Two two by ten and a half inch strips, and one two by twelve inch strip. Log cabin blocks are versatile because they can be monochromatic or colorful. I've chosen to just use scraps I have left over from other sewing projects so my finished quilt will be very bright. Here's how the block will be laid out. I prefer to just grab a piece from a plastic bag as it's needed, rather than laying out each block beforehand, but it's up to you. The log cabin block is very easy to assemble. I'm adding a pin to the center piece to make it easy for you to follow along. Notice how the heart is at the top of the block. Place the two by three and a half inch piece face down on the center square, lining them up along the right edge. Sew down the right edge with a quarter inch seam. You'll use a quarter inch seam throughout the block. Stop and press each seam after you sew it. For the log cabin block, I like to press on the right side of the fabric, pushing outward from the center. To add the next piece, just turn your block counterclockwise a quarter of a turn. You'll be sewing a 2 by 5 inch piece to the next edge. If you're keeping an eye on the heart pin, you'll note that this places the 5 inch strip along the bottom of the square block. Again, sew along the right edge with a quarter inch seam and press. I won't show footage of me pressing each piece because I'd have to keep moving my camera, but trust me, I'm pressing. Rotate the block once counterclockwise. Now the heart pin is upside down, so that means I'm sewing along the left side of the center square. Sew the second 5 inch strip to the block as you did the other pieces, then press. Turn the block again and sew a 6 and a half inch strip at the top of the center block. Are you getting the hang of it now? Then rotate and add the other 6 and a half inch strip to the right of the square. Here's where you'll notice that some of your strips are about a quarter inch too long. That's okay, it's much easier to cut them a tad too long than to worry about fussy measurements. You have two choices. You can leave the excess and it will become a part of your seam allowance. If you do that, be sure that you're lining up the next piece with the long straight edge of the block and not the excess flap of fabric. Here's what it looks like from the back with the excess fabric. Or you can grab your fabric scissors and quickly snip off the extra fabric before you sew.
keep adding the remaining strips in the order they're listed. Here's a peek at the back. Ideally, you want your seams to lay flat. If I do happen to get a seam caught in the wrong direction, I don't go back and unpick it. Unless you're planning to enter the blanket into a quilt show, nobody will notice it on your finished quilt. Just press it as flat as you can and move on. Here's what my finished block looks like from the front, along with a few others I've made. I'll be using 54 of these blocks to create a twin size quilt with overhang and no sash. If you'd like a video to see how I'll be assembling and completing the quilt, leave a request in the comments. For more great DIY videos, check out my Style Hall Partnership Network. For written instructions, please visit my website, madebymarzipan.com, and search for Log Cabin.